Hello and welcome to episode number 32 of Girl Streamers. Girl Streamers is a podcast bringing you the girl streamers that you know and love. Girl Streamers is a community that supports and promotes girls that stream. We are a bi-weekly podcast and we'll be introducing you to some amazing girl gamers and allow you, the viewer, to get to know some of your favorite streamers. My name is Nymphadora and I will be your host during this interview. And tonight we will be interviewing Acid Queen and if there is time at the end we'll take questions from the audience in the channel this is a live podcast but we will be available for download on itunes stitcher google play and youtube what's up acid queen how you doing hey now what's up uh i'm here <laughs> i'm here <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. yeah, so... I'm it... surprised I haven't been mauled by an orange cat yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sure as it goes on, we're all of a sudden going to hear meow, 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 meow. <laughs> and then you'll see big orange paws reaching up like, Mom, pick me up. <laughs> the cat weighs 20 pounds. By the oh way. my gosh. Oh he my gosh. Big... Yes, he is a very big kitty. Um, and it's just a little orange tabby. A little, I say little. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a giant orange tabby. And then I have a tiny little black kitty. <laughs> Aww, I was they're just... both they're both eleven years old, but little Sun Tzu is like the size of a six month old kitten. Aww, yeah, cause, um, he's um, he was um, he was the runt of his litter, and he adopted he adopted me and my late husband when, when he was six months old. And the vet that um, that uh, saw him, you know, on his first appointment, said, um, "I hate to break it to you guys, but that's all the bigger he's ever going to get." And we're like. Okay. And this is a problem. Why? <laughs> oh, I was just hanging out with a friend who she's uh she's got two cats and they just moved into their first house and their cat is uh well, Ruby is a beautiful black cat who's uh getting a little big. She, yep. She getting a little big. I'm like, "Um, Ruby, honey, you uh yeah. not missing many meals. Uh, <laughs> are you are you are you muscling the other cats out of the way at the food bowl? Apparently, uh, she is stealing Pearl's food though. Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So so, how has your week been? My week has my week has been quiet, which is really about all I could ask for. <laughs> that's good. Yes. Um, so. I don't think I ever get a silent week anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you. I know this podcast was originally supposed to be last Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for working with me and oh, rescheduling. Yeah. Um, Not a problem. Easily was supposed to start a new cast tonight as well, uh, but she uh, worked with me and was able to... Um, she's going to do it, I believe the 15th is when she's going to start oh, okay. her new cast, which cool. is called Stream Theory, so you guys will have to come back and check that out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mentally, we were cleaning out and doing an estate sale for all of our people who died last year, so, uh, Ooh, yeah. getting, you know, doing the whole estate sale and all that stuff, so... It was mentally draining, and by the end of Sunday, I was like, I can't, I just can't, I just can't, so. Yeah, I understand completely. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I'm okay, you know, it's just mm -hmm. when you're watching your grandma's suits go out the door, or. Oh, it's hard to deal with. It's, it's tough. It's tough, yeah. so. Yeah, because, I mean, before I, um, before I moved out here to California from Maryland, um, I basically had to go over 20 years of accumulated stuff from my husband's and my marriage. Oh my gosh. And there was a lot of gaming stuff that I sold off. Oh. And it was and it was hard because it was all of Mike's. But I didn't have room for it and I needed yeah. the money, you know. And I offered it to all his friends and his friends were like, "No, look, you know, to keep it you know, sell it, get what you can for it, you know, because we know Mike, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't want you to, you know, be up a creek. Right. So I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> Aww. 
you yeah, know, we, we knew a few things that I kept, like his his first dead monster manual with the Cthulhu mythos, or deities and demigods with the Cthulhu mythos. Yes, in it. that's like first awesome. Monster manual with the Githyanki on the cover, and a couple of other things, but everything else I've had to sell, and that was really really hard. It is. It's tough, and um, you know, I'm lucky to have a really awesome family that you know we just. We do what we got to do. Um, oh, and speak of the orange devil. <laughs> oh, did the kitty show up? Nice. Yep. Oh, there I he see is. him. Oh, he's there so cute. He is He is a very handsome cat. Yes, Terrence. <laughs> yes. He's he like, mom, are we here to talk about me? Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yes. all right. Well, let's, let's get into, um, let's get into, let's talk about <laughs> you. Uh-oh. Um, so, uh, speaking my of least family, favorite subject. Oh my god! <laughs> sorry. Speaking of family, my mom I... just texted me. <laughs> oh jeez. Uh, they went to visit my little brother, who is stationed, who is training at Keesler Air Force Base this uh, this past month, and she's letting oh, okay. me know they were home. Oh. Um, so, how did you come up with your screen name? Oh God. <laughs> A long time ago in a game group far, far away. Well, actually, it was in Mankato, Minnesota. Um, the uh, the GM was running Shadowrun campaign, and it was a one-off for um, like this local Relaxicon. Uh, and what the we heck all had is a Relaxicon? With... A Relaxicon is basically something. There aren't really you know panels per se, and you just show up and chill out and enjoy the fandom for a weekend. Oh, that sounds um, fun. Yeah, it's, you know, like, um, think like a con, but just much slower paced and yeah. just more about chilling and socializing than, you know, making connections and networking and perusing the dealer floor and the whole thing. So that's kind of what a relax a con is. That's yeah. chill. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, Kat, don't you even dump my iPad on the floor. <laughs> I will have an orange set of gloves if you do that. Oh, he doesn't care. <laughs> He's like, heard it before. But no, anyway, um, so the um, um, the DM was running a Shadowrun campaign, and everybody had to pick a character um, to run. You know, figured, oh, we'll just run with archetypes and run, you know, just standard, you know, book campaign or whatever. Yeah. And um, I picked a combat decker, and I couldn't think of a good name for her, so... Um, I, I thought, well, what kind of a concept do I want, you know, to describe this character? And it's like, well, she looks she looks strung out, but it's all an act. And um, her icon is an LSD molecule with, you know, wearing a crown of thorns with, you know, the set of hand raisers. Right? <laughs> so I was like, okay, oh, hey, she's the acid queen. All right. So I just kind of, you know, kept that for a while. And then... Um, some and then a couple years later on uh, IRC, I needed a good nickname because I was tired of having to explain Godmom all the time because that was a strictly BattleTech thing and anybody outside the BattleTech fandom really wouldn't get it. <laughs> so I just decided to call myself Acid Queen and people were just kind of like, "Oh, nice Tommy reference," you know. And I was like, "Well, thank you because I like the Who, so it fits." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, "Yeah, the Who is one of my favorite bands. Thank you very much." Nice. <laughs> so it works on many levels. It does work on many levels, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. Um, so you said you're in California right now and you're from yes. Maryland. Are you from well, Maryland? or I I started out two and a half hours to the north in Los Angeles. Because oh. that's where I was born. <laughs> okay. And then when I was 10, my mother, um, you know, packed packed up me and my sister and we moved to North Dakota, and that was where I spent um, the the entire Reagan administration, pretty much, um, plus a couple of years after that. And then I moved to, you know, I was in Montana for a little while, came back to North Dakota, was in Idaho for a year, came back to North Dakota, got married, moved to Minnesota, then went from Minnesota to North Carolina, was in North Carolina for the bulk of my life. So when it, people ask where I'm from, I just tell them I'm from North Carolina. Okay. And, yeah, and when I get really upset, then then the southerner comes out <laughs> so <laughs> it's like son <laughs> they're all like uh oh <laughs> bless uh -oh, your son. heart <laughs> bless your heart <laughs> yeah. 
I love it. I got to say to the go F yourself tone of voice. You yes. Know? So people know that you're saying go F yourself instead of, oh, you poor soul. <laughs> you know, I, um, I spent, um, like after my husband died, um, I, uh, I lived in Colorado for a little over a year. And that didn't end too well because my sister and I cannot, we cannot be in the same place for very long or we start fighting. And the whole atmosphere just becomes really toxic. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't want my nephew to have to, you know, to have to deal with that and eventually wind up being pulled between mom and auntie. You know? Yeah. So, oh, yes, Terrence, I'm totally talking about you. I'm not even talking about your cousin Fletcher. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask that. <laughs> so, so then um, I, you know, I packed up everything that I had with me in Denver and moved out to Annapolis, Maryland, and lived in Annapolis, Maryland with a friend for a year, and was trying to find work in the tech sector out there. But uh, then the election happened, and there's there was a semi-permanent federal hiring freeze put on, and everybody went to contractors. Well, yeah. The contractors in the greater D.C. area, um, they want people who already have security clearances. I didn't have a security clearance, even though I had plenty of experience working in, you know, in, with state and federal government. Right. So they're like, no clearance, no job. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so then, um, so then I wound up coming out here because a friend, of, a very old friend of mine uh, that lives, you know, that lives out here and is stationed here with the Navy said, look, I've got a spare bedroom. You can come and, you know, you can come and stay there and, you know, um, basically try to reboot everything so yeah. 37 years after i left i'm back in california <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh you've lived all over the place yes. holy cow yep um that's cool though so i didn't realize that you lived a bulk of your life in south carolina what part or north carolina, north carolina. what part of north oh, carolina south carolina <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, please! Uh, no, um, Raleigh. I lived in Raleigh. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, and I had um, when I had moved out there. It was um, when the tech boom had just started. Oh so yeah. It was like in the mid '90s, so I never really had to worry about work until yeah. the bubble burst. You know, in uh, the early 2000s. It's um, it it seems to be coming back a little bit. Though. A little bit. Yeah, it is. Um. That's cool, though. Um, so, holy cow, I didn't realize you lived all over the oh, yeah. freaking U.S. Place. Yep. <laughs> um, so, what is the first game that you ever played that got you into the gaming world? Oh, God. Pong. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Pong back in 1976. Atari like 2600? Oh, this is before the 2600. The 2600 didn't come out until 81? No, uh, 1980 was when the 2600 came out. Okay. Yeah, and I, um, no, I started I started gaming in 76. That was when I discovered uh, video games, and Pong was the first game. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so I was actually there to witness the birth of the console. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the 2600, the ColecoVision, the Coleco Atom, and, you know, on so, up through the line. <laughs> did you... So you, you, you're a big PC gamer, but do you still do consoles, or do you stick to PC? No, I, um, believe it or not, I never... The first console that I ever owned was an Xbox 360. And oh. that was, and that was something that my uh, that Mike and I had bought back in 2012. Okay. Yeah, but before then, I never I never owned a console. It you know it was always PCs, and when I did play on console, it was either playing at a friend's house or playing at the Kmart in Minot when you know we would go up there <laughs> to go shopping. Mom would just be like, "Okay, go to the TV department and play on the Atari, and I'll know where to find you." I was like, "Okay, yeah." <laughs> And she'd show up, and I'd be playing, like, Space Invaders or Pac-Man or whatever game they had on the Atari console at the time. <laughs> nice. Do you, now, do you, um, do you remember Commodore 64s? I do remember the Commodore 64, and I wanted to have one, but then my mother and I went to see War Games ah! <laughs> when it first came out. Now, keep in mind, this is my mother, the woman who could not figure out a TV remote with six buttons on off channel up channel down volume up volume down 
Okay. She always had trouble with it and was always asking my sister to help her. Okay. Well, we went to see war games. And when we came out of the theater, she turned to me and she said, if you ever think of getting a computer while you're under my roof, I'll kill you. And wow. I tried to explain to her, you know, like the Lady of the Guy commercial. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. But <laughs> she just, she wasn't hearing it, you know, because she figured I would just hack myself a phone connection, even if I didn't have a modem. You know, and this is back in the days of the acoustic coupler modems when 2400 baud was like ridiculously lightning fast. Yeah. You know, super expensive. But she figured I would just hack myself a phone connection and hack the CIA and, like, the entire Secret Service would be coming down to rain hell on our house in five minutes. <laughs> I'm just like, no, oh Mom, God. that's a movie, Mom. It's that a is, movie. That is so great. Because oh, my husband but... started out, he started with the Commodore 64. Oh, yeah. So, he, because he, he is, um, he just turned 50, so... He is right there in the whole beginning process as yep. well. But he's not a console gamer. Mm -hmm. He started with computers. So, yep. And I started with consoles with the Nintendo. So that was the first, my yep. first game experience. So oh, it's yeah. so weird to see, like, the difference and stuff. Like, when it comes mm -hmm. to computers, the man knows his stuff. Like, oh, yeah. He's so, because he grew up with them and he's mm -hmm. just stayed, you know, even though he's not a computer person, he stayed right. with it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's just kind of, you know, one of those learning by practice. Oh, what are you going to roll up on your back now, cat? <laughs> that's so awesome. So, <laughs> um, how long then have you been streaming? Um, I started streaming in earnest last year. Yeah, about last May or so. So oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I had some technical issues um, to start with, but then I found, you know, um, because my computer at the time was a potato. Yeah, I <laughs> and, remember. <laughs> yeah. Good old potato computer. You're like, so I can't do anything on this thing right now. <laughs> yeah. So the only the only game that would, you know, that would actually stream was Star Wars The Old Republic. So I started out as, as exclusively a SWOTOR streamer. And, um, um, you know, started building a following there. And then um, just, you know, now that I have, um, when I moved out here to, um, to San Diego, I got, a, you know, got a new computer, which was basically a hand-me-down from my roommate. And so I am, uh, so I'm using that, and that is much more capable. <laughs> it is definitely not a potato. <laughs> Uh, so what got you into streaming then? If you just because um, I thought you'd been streaming way longer than no, I mean I had. I've, I've been watching streams and I've had a Twitch account for a, you know I've had a Twitch account for about three years now, but it was mostly just to watch other people's streams. Yeah. Um, so you know what got me into streaming was basically I just got a wild hair one day and thought, yeah, what the hell, you know. I want to do this. Cause I, yeah, because I wanted to share. I wanted to share my gaming with with friends of mine, you know, from Facebook and so forth. And so I actually started um, sh uh, with stream sh or Steam Share. <laughs> so I would share my game on Steam, and you know, friends that had Steam could watch me on Steam. And I didn't even I, know that existed. Yeah, you can do that. I had so no idea. Just, and then I just migrated over to Twitch and um, haven't really looked back. That's cool. Yep. That's dope, man. So oh, yes. what is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you on stream? God. The night I fell up the stairs. Oh, this sounds like a great the story. The night I fell up the stairs. This was, oh my God. I was, um, I, I had taken a break. You know, I was like, all right, guys, I got to take a brief break. So, you know, I'm going to switch it over to the cat cam and you know, I'm going to go up, uh, I'm going to go upstairs and get a drink. Right. Well, I tripped going up the stairs and face planted. So everybody that was watching, you know, they could hear. You know, <laughs> fuck, you know? and, and then I come back and I've got a rug burn on my upper lip. Oh, no, you know? and I've got, I've, you know, I've got a shiner. Because my glasses got kind of shoved into oh, my, you know, God. into my my uh, my orbital bone, but fortunately they didn't break. <laughs> and I just, I basically looked like I had gotten 
the worst end of a fight with a honey badger. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, Asa Queen, what the hell happened? And I said, I tripped going up the stairs. <laughs> and everybody's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm just, I'm going up the stairs. La, 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 la. <laughs> Boom. I, I didn't even get up the stairs, <laughs> you know. And so I have... I have Terrence all over me like, Mom! Oh my God, Mom, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> and, so, you know, little Sun Tzu is like, you are such a klutz, Mom. You know? And then um, Castiel, who was uh, the cow cat that, um, that owned, you know, that was one of my owners at the time. Um, he kind of ran down and was like, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, are there cacooties here? Is there catnip? What's oh, up? God. What's up? Oh, hey, Mom, how you doing? Oh, I'm going back upstairs now. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, so there was that. So, yeah, that was the night I fell up the stairs. That was the most embarrassing moment ever. And I actually had, I had a face cam at the time, you know. So I put the face cam back on, and I was like, "Yep, this is what I look like right now." And everybody's like, "Holy crap, you look like shit." <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yep. Well, at least you didn't get hurt. <laughs> No, at least you didn't get hurt. Uh, just a little ice, and I just kept the um, I kept the um, um, kept the face cam off for a couple of weeks, you know, while everything healed up. <laughs> yeah. So, and then <laughs> oh, I had to be very careful not to, you know, not to scratch the bits that were scabbing up, especially the rug burn on my upper lip because oh, I had yeah. a Hitler mustache scar because oh, that would have just been it, you know. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Oh my God. So would you say that is the most memorable moment you've had while streaming? Um. Or would you say there's another? It's one of two. One of two. Oh, what's two. the other one? Um. The other one was when um was the day that one of my favorite voice actors came and lurked in my Mass Effect Andromeda stream for a little bit. What? Yeah. And That's dope. I'm I am not going to name names, but I kind of figured it out and I actually sent him a DM on Twitch and I said, "Is this your Twitch name?" and he said, "Um, I can neither confirm nor deny." Wink. And I went, "Okay, it's all I need to know." That's so <laughs> Awesome! I would freak out if the voiceover, the voice well, actor for Lucio lurked in my stream. I'd freak oh out. Oh, I know. He's adorbs, isn't he? He mm. is so. Yeah. One, he's hot, too. He's just, like, super awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. just a but... cool dude. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, I was, you know, so I was, I was kind of, like, I was inwardly fangirling, but I wasn't going to say anything because he didn't say anything. You know, so and um, when people come in the stream in my streams and they're lurking, I won't, you know, I won't greet them unless they actually say something first, because I know Same. that a lot of people like to come in and lurk and not, you know, and just lurk and not say anything. Paragon so, Trouble is the queen of lurking. Oh, yes, she is. She's one of my mods. <laughs> she <laughs> is legit the queen of lurking. But... She's one of my mods, but you know she she also serves as my troll deterrent. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that I I'm a lurker. I go I don't always say things in people's streams, mm -hmm. um, just because sometimes I can't. Like I'm actually a lot of times during the day, I'll be working and have like two or three different streams up and just oh yeah watching streams. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually um I actually do have a lurk command for my stream. You know, so if people want to use it, they can. And so, um, you know, it's basically the bot just says, you know, so and so comes into the bar, gets a drink at the, or comes in and gets a drink at the bar, and then goes to join little Sun Tzu in the corner for some people watching. And it has a little BTTV emote of a tiny black cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. So, uh, so what, um, what type of games do you like to play in stream? Um, aside from Star Wars. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, God, I haven't streamed Swotor in a long time, um, but... Shame. For shame. I know, I know, I know. But no, um, I do like, um, like, first and third person shooter type games. Um, I've also been known to stream, um, you know, stuff like Diablo. Um, I haven't tried Fallout lately. Um, I did try Ark, but... OBS didn't like it, even though I was running in low memory mode. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of like, well, <laughs> I can't show people that I'm running from tiny carnivorous dinosaurs while trying to play Minecraft. That's out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, it's just, you know, whatever I feel like I feel like throwing up on the stream, that's what I stream. Uh, so it's kind of a big grab bag. If it's interesting, I'll play it. If it's fun enough, and I think, you know, people might be amused by it, you know, or like it, then I'll stream it. <laughs> Nice. So you, you're a variety mm-hmm. streamer. You... I am. Yeah, I'm pretty variety. Yeah. Nice. So mm-hmm. um, what's your favorite game? And I know this is a loaded question, but a lot of people can't answer it. A lot of people can. <laughs> um, so what would you say is your favorite game right now? Like, is there a game that you're absolutely obsessed with right um... now? It's actually a tie between Warframe and Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, okay. Yeah, really the whole tr- the whole Mass Effect saga, like all four games. But um, right now the uh, the game that I've been switching up is um, Andromeda. Like yesterday I did a variety stream that started out with Andromeda, went to Dragon Age Inquisition, and then I did some Warframe right at the end. Huh. Nice. Um, yeah. So what is your favorite game of all times? Oh, my favorite game of all time? Ooh, um, Mass Effect 2. Oh, okay. Best in the trilogy. Nice. Yep, I've never actually never played any of the Mass Effect series, and it's really funny. Oh, it's so funny because I have friends who... It's one of those games that <laughs> you either love it or you hate it. Yep. There's no in-between. I yep. have never talked to anybody who's played Mass Effect that said... Eh, it's all right. Yeah, they either think it's great or they think it's horrible. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I, I know several people who are like, yeah, it's not worth it. It is not <laughs> worth it. They're, it's not that good. But I know just as many yep. people who are like, uh, yeah, you need to play that game. Yes, you do. You really should. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You really should. I mean, it's it's got a good story. Um, I mean, setting aside the horrible ending of Mass Effect 3, and I can fight that holy war all over again if people want me to, but I'd rather not because the horse has been dead for five years. Let's not turn it into a zombie. Um, <laughs> but, um, I mean, aside from the horrible ending of Mass Effect 3, the, the whole trilogy is great. I mean, it, you know, it got me back into writing. I mean, hell, the... It, it saved my marriage. Um, and I'm not kidding when I say that because my, um, my, I mean, you know, my husband and I were married for 21 years and 11 days, but that it wasn't all days of wine and roses. I mean, you know, there were never is. Yeah. You know, (laughs) anybody who's been married knows this, but there were, I mean, there was, uh, there were several years, um, where it was a cold war between me and him and we never really talked to each other much um except to uh snap at each other unless there was a crisis you know because then um you know then we would basically join forces and defeat what you know beat down whatever problem it was and um you know but then it would be you know the detente would be over and we'd be resuming you know we'd be resuming covert hostilities right um, well, what happened was we, um, we finally got into couples counseling at the, um, at the suggestion of, um, Mike's Bishop. Cause he, he was Mormon. He was a member of the Mormon church. I was not, I am not. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say this right here. Yeah. Um, counseling of any form or fashion is amazing. Yes. Couples counseling is great. Mm-hmm. My husband and I just recently went through couples counseling. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been together for seven years. Yeah. I mean, you know, that seven year itch, you don't think it's real until you have actually hit oh, it. And no you're like, kidding. oh, my God, there's actually issues here that we need to work on. Yeah. Marriage yeah. counseling, a couples counseling is really good. <laughs> it is. It, it is. works. And, yeah, <laughs> when you and... when you both want to actually fix it, it works. Right. Yeah, and it was, you know, um, at first Mike didn't, you know, Mike thought that it would just be for me because I do suffer from depression, you know, from major depressive disorder and, As do I. you know, and CPTSD. So he thought it was just going to be for me. And then the um, the therapist said, well, you know, I did, um, you know, I did speak to Bishop, you know, 
to the bishop at uh, at your ward and um you know he did um you know he did ask me to talk to the both of you and he said i can tell that you know maybe there are some things that do need to be worked out and i just without even thinking about it i just said i'm game because you know i mean i mike knew we made a great team i knew we made a great team and i was just tired of the cold war yeah. you know there had to be some way to figure out how to talk to each other you know after uh it was 17 years at that point you know so mass effect brought you guys together oh yeah so i'm I, so what happened was as part of it um the um so as part of it the therapist said you know you guys really need to find um you know shared interests okay i mean you both like gaming right maybe there's you know um he said you know i know you know camille i know you don't like um you're not really into the the grand strategy games that mike is into and mike you know you're not into like you know diablo 3 but maybe there's another game that you know you guys can play together you know and at that time i had actually gotten into I had started playing Mass Effect, the you know, because of some guild, uh, some people that were guildmates of mine at the time in Star Wars: The Old Republic, and they said, "Oh, Maddie, you've got to check this out. You've got to check this game out. It's really awesome. You'll love it. You know, it's right up your alley." And I'm like, "Oh, okay," because I thought it was Xbox only, so I never even paid attention to it. Well, yeah. it's like, "Oh, hey, it's on PC. Oh, okay," <laughs> and this was right before Mass Effect Three came out. So I got, you know, I got Mass Effect 1 on a Steam sale, and I played it. But I didn't have enough money to get two, you know. Ah, oh, Steam sale is so great. Oh, God, I know. Steam sales I burned, so burned my much. wallet up so many times. So yeah. many times. I spend too much money on the Steam sales. Yeah, so I you know, played through <laughs> Mass Effect 1, loved it. And then Mass Effect 3 came out, and Mike and I had pre-ordered it because we, we did the demo, and it looked good. And so I did a cold playthrough of ME3, which you're really not supposed to do. <laughs> and, you know, I was so upset at the ending. I was like, no, I've got to get Mass Effect 2. Maybe the ending will be different if I get Mass Effect 2. So, so then I had all three games, and I started a playthrough from, you know, the start of Mass Effect 1 all the way through to the end of ME3, right? And I just, you know... I just kept playing Mass Effect 2 because it was so much fun. You know, even though I learned all the, you know, even though I very quickly learned all the missions, left, right, up, down, center, knew all the best a a avenues of attack and angles of approach and everything, it was fun. It was just fun to play, you know? And um, we all have that game that we go back oh, to yeah. all the time. Absolutely. And so one day Mike comes to me and he said, um, sweetie, could you install Mass Effect 1 and 2 on my computer? Because, uh, and I said, what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, he's like, you keep playing about, you keep playing this all the time and you keep talking about it with people on the internet and you're just all fired up about it. And he's like, I want to see what's going on. So, Aww. I, yeah, so I said, okay, you know, so I started, um, so I went and I installed, you know, installed 1 and 2 with all the DLCs, you know, on Mike's computer and, and then he started his playthrough, you know, and um, and then I just created a Tumblr and started writing down like all of his comments that he would make, you know, while playing. <laughs> <laughs> because he said some of the funniest damn things, <laughs> and um, you know, and so um, we started talking about. You know, started talking about the game, which led to us talking about, you know, other things. And, you know, we just kind of worked everything out. So if it wasn't for Mass Effect, I don't think we would have made it to 21 years. You know, our marriage probably would have detonated by the time we hit year 18. <laughs> so Because it helped open lines of communication again. Yeah, you know, and I mean, there were other things like, you know, the both of us finally being formally evaluated and being told, yes, you guys actually are both on the autistic spectrum. Let's learn how you guys can talk to each other. <laughs> oh, wow. And, you know, yeah, I like, can imagine that kind of yeah, that I mean, kind of just, screws it up a little bit. Yeah, we didn't know how to talk to each other. Yeah. You know? So um so we just started talking to each other and then 
you know, we got the, and there you go, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so when I, yeah, so when I, you know, it's like, I, part of me wants to cock punch Casey Hudson over the shit show that was the end of Mass Effect 3, but at the same time, I also want to give him a hug and a kiss and a thank you card. <laughs> it's like, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted. I don't know what to do. You saved my marriage, but I don't like the ending. <laughs> You saved my marriage, but you can't write for shit, dude. <laughs> Jeez. Oh God. So, um, what is it about that game that attracts you so that just that attracts you to that game? What is it about um, the game? Oh God. And talk to the, a new. You're talking to a noob here. I've never played oh, the yeah. games. No, what I like, I like the um, I like the storyline. Um, it's. It's one of these kind of, um, on some levels, it's kind of an exploration of, you know, what does constitute life, um, you know, because it's more than, on its surface, it's basically organics versus synthetics. Okay. okay. But on another level, it kind of makes you wonder what's really out there. You know, are there bigger things than us? Is there more to life? Oh. You know, and... And honestly, it's a Bioware game, and the the writers at Bioware they do one thing really, really well, and that is they can punch you right in the feels. Feels, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and the and the voice acting, you know, is oh god, I love the voice acting. Honestly, um, all the voice actors, any of the voice actors in that in that series, they could read the phone book to me, and I would just be sitting there. <sighs> yes, <laughs> on my face, you know. I love uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm not gonna lie. A game can be really amazing, but if the oh, voice acting is not good, I cannot get into the game. Yeah. Um. Oh, I yeah. mean. <clears throat> voice acting you definitely gotta spend money on you know it can be beautiful but if your acting is bad yeah if the voice acting is crap then you know it's it's gonna turn people off it's like how like i i'm gonna say it i did i was uh, i went to a uh tournament with the husband the other day because he's doing Hearthstone tournaments, and um, God. he used to play oh. Elf, he used to play Legend of the Five Rings and like be yep. super amazing. Uh huh. And um, so he's getting back into the card game tournament. So I went with him. It's at this place called Battle and Brew, and so you can rent a computer for the mm -hmm. day and play whatever they have on their computer. Well, they had Witcher Three, beautiful game. Oh, Lord. Playthrough is beautiful. Oh yeah, voice the play is, the play is great. The voice acting, not so much. The voice acting is complete garbage, and I was like, I can't get past this terrible acting. Yeah, Geralt is Geralt is a fine ass man, but the the directing of the vo I think I don't think it was the voice acting itself so much as it was the direction because direction Possibly. can have a lot to do with it. Yeah, um, just something it went was wrong. Like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's so funny because I've actually listened to it in Polish because the developer is in Poland, right? Ah, um, yeah. okay. Yeah, so just out of curiosity, I just listened to it, you know, in Polish with the Polish voice actors and everything, and it actually sounded a lot better. I couldn't that understand be what they were saying because I don't speak Polish, but, you know. Um, That's possibly what it I was. Got a lot, I got a lot more out of it. Um. So, Which is really weird because the Emperor is played by friggin' Tywin Dam Lannister. I mean, you know. <gasps> Are you serious? That's dope. I'm serious. The Emperor is Charles Dance. That's I awesome. It's like, I went and I looked up. I was like, God, the Emperor's voice. The Emperor sounds really familiar. So I went and I IMDB'd the game and I went, Tywin Lannister. Ah! You're yeah. <laughs> like, wow. So, um... <laughs> What games are you excited about uh, that are coming out soon? Are you excited um, about anything that's coming out soon? Yes. Um, I am actually excited about an, uh, an, an expansion. Um, Planes of Eidolon, which is the upcoming expansion for Warframe. Oh, okay. It is going to add open world ex um, exploration 
uh, weapon cra- weapon crafting and a bunch of other things. Oh, that one. Okay. Yes. And I've heard a I lot of people talk about seen, it. I have seen, uh, you know, dev previews of it, and I've, you know, I've watched the dev streams and seen, you know, seen clips that the devs have posted to Twitter of, you know, what's going on during testing, and I'm just like, damn, son. <laughs> nice. That- it looks nice. So I'm eagerly awaiting it. There are a lot of people that are saying, it's going to be out next week. But no, it's probably not going to be out next week. It'll probably be out um, either the end of this month or next month. You know, I didn't realize how long Warframe had... How I didn't realize how long it had been around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I started playing it um, about um, about three and a half years ago. When um, when it first got into you know quote unquote open beta, and I had stopped playing because there was the move to Denver and you know and all the stuff that happened right. there and I had a lot of other things that um, I was kind of focused on you know, and so I just never really bothered with it. Well, then I got I got back into it um, after some friends of mine that you know still played it through the years said, oh yeah you should check it out now they've made a lot of changes to it and I you know and I just updated it and started playing it again and i went wow this is kind of cool this it's, is fun <laughs> i've played it a little bit um mm-hmm. the controls are going from world of warcraft to um yeah. that game it, it's a little different it's quite a bit yeah. different from your standard mmo yeah um as far as the I controls have, and how it works bit of, i have done a little bit of remapping <laughs> um but. it's but i like I, I like the mood. It's a very well made game. It I feel is. Like it really is. I feel like it's really. I don't know. Is it just me? Because I'm just in the Twitch world. Just because I just got into the Twitch uh, community, or right. has it always been as big as it is? Um, I feel it like has, it's just like boomed all of a sudden. It has gotten. It has grown steadily over the years. Okay. Yeah. Um, especially with the, um, especially with the advent of streaming, you know, it just seems like there's an explosion because there are more people that are streaming it, but the user base has always been fairly constant and, you know, generally on a slight upward trend. That's, that's crazy. Like that's, it's, it's a very pretty game. Mm -hmm. It's i I'm just, I'm at that point in my life right now where I ain't got time for an MMO. I love WoW. Yeah. I miss WoW, but then I go in and play WoW, and I'm like, I ain't got time for this. Yeah, it's like the thing—the thing that I like most about Warframe. Um, I mean, aside from, you know, the gameplay and and the story, even though it is kind of story light compared to, for example, a Bioware game, um, it's the community because the community is oh, so low massive. toxicity. You yeah. know, it's. And it's like people that are truly toxic don't last very long. You know, they tend to kind of get clustered into one particular, um, you know, place, more or less. Yeah. And people learn very quickly, you know, who to avoid. (laughs) It's like, oh, yeah, anybody in that clan, they're jerks. Don't bother with them. You know, where that guy right there, he's, you (laughs) know, he's kind of a douche. And word gets around, you know. So, I mean, if you're cool with people, then, you know, word gets around there. You know, but if you're an asshat, everybody knows about it real damn quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, it's uh, I mean, it's got a really awesome community. I will say that it's got mm-hmm. some oh, really, yeah. really cool people in it. Um, yep. So, uh, moving on to my next question: What okay. is one game you would want to have a reboot or a remastering of? I'm torn. Um. Um, either the Mass Effect trilogy and bring it all up to kind of the same graphics level or Dragon Age and bring it all up to, you know, Ooh. like redo it all using the Frostbite engine, you oh, know, like they use for Inquisition. Because um, I do love, I do love the Dragon Age trilogy. Dragon Age is so good. Oh, yes. <sighs> I've never finished it and I started yeah. playing it on stream. I will get back to it, but... Um, yep. I don't want to finish it off stream. I want to get back to it. Because mm-hmm. a lot of my followers are like, are you ever going to get back to Dragon Age? I promise I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's, you know, 
I haven't I haven't played uh, Origins in a while, but um, I have played um, you know, but I have been playing Inquisition a good bit, and I just I love Inquisition. The, Every um, time I hear that word, I think of Spanish Inquisition. The Inquisition. And I think of the Mel Brooks. Inquisition. Yep. <laughs> Every time I hear that word. But the Inquisition's here, and it's here to stalk my own. Did you rip me in the background? Yeah, my roommate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will do that. It is so funny. It's like on my streams, I'll just start randomly filking on stream and just, you know, kind of making up a song to the tune of something. And, you know, and then... um you know, Jay, my roommate, he'll join in. <laughs> that is great. Like, everybody's listening like, oh, my God, what the what the frell is that? What are you doing? Oh, my oh God. My gosh. <laughs> That's an awesome roommate right there. Yep. Yeah, he's he is my brother from another mother, and I am his sister from another mister. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so great. So, mm-hmm. all right, this is the part of the podcast where we get a little bit serious. Okay. Who inspires you to be the woman you are today? Admiral Grace Hopper. Would you like to elaborate on that? Um, yeah, it is. It is easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have tended to do that quite a bit. It's like you know, there's a. Um, she never took shit, and um, quite frankly, um, you know, her her um, motto was all you know, basically that that saying it is easier to ask forgiveness than to ask permission it's basically saying if something needs to be done do it (laughs) and you know rather than waiting for somebody to say yes you can do it (laughs) um so that's you know that's kind of how i try to live my life i mean i also try to not be a dick but you know right yeah (laughs) (laughs) you know but it's like hmm grace hopper will wheaton Mm, nah, Grace Hopper. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what? What is it that you like about um, being a part of Girl Streamers? Oh God, um, the fact that the community is very welcoming and very, very supportive. Um, you know, it's like, it's like when I'm in the Girl Streamers chat. Um, I feel that I can talk about things and I know that I will be listened to, you know, I won't be blown off or, um, made fun of, or, you know, have somebody make some snappy comment, um, which happened to me with another, um, you know, stream community that I recently left. Um, Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, and it's really sad because, you know, that community is actually, you know, it was it was one of those things that was like a great idea, but it eventually just got, I think it just got a little too big for itself. That, yeah, that can happen. Yeah, and so I just, you know, and the fact that it is, you know, that it is a, a women-only space, you know, um, it just, I just find that to be um, safer. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's easier for me to, if I need someone to talk to, you know, or if I need to just vent about something. Yeah. Um, I I feel more secure venting about it there, you know, because I know that somebody will listen to me. There'll be somebody that can empathize, and just say, you know, hey, I've been through this before. Um, this is what worked for me. You might want to try it, or you know, um. Or just have somebody say, you know, hey, do you want me to, you know, do you want to chat via PMs? You know, go ahead and hit me up. Or, you know, or, or something like that. Oh, yeah. that's so awesome. Uh, that's why I'm sorry. <laughs> As um, management of the girl streamers, yeah. I love that question because it mm-hmm. totally gives me a big head because I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm part of that. I'm yeah. totally part of that. But I, it it also makes me realize that we are on the right track as far as what yeah. we do. Because, I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, we're constantly working, trying to add more to it, trying to make things better. Right. Um, you know, and we listen when people give us suggestions. Um, mm-hmm. They don't always get implemented because, you know, 
sometimes suggestions just aren't yeah sometimes it's just not feasible right but you know, you know we listen and we discuss it and um right. you know a lot of people look at me when they're like girl streamers just it's an all-girl group i'm like yeah it's an all-girl group it's run by Pretty girls much. and it's managed by girls and it's all girls mm -hmm. And they're like, what? There's no caddy cat fight. You know, they, you know, you go to the cat fight comments and I'm like, actually, you'd be quite surprised at how little drama there is. Yeah, it's very <laughs> drama. Um, it's very drama free. I, I mean, mean like, when there is a little bit of drama, it get, we nix it really fast. You know, we right. don't put up with it. And it's quite empowering to yeah. be well, in I mean, a group were... that's so positive. Well, you were there a couple of weeks ago when, you know, when I had an episode, you know, after I had, um, after I had run out of, um, uh, run out of my med, yeah, my yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I and remember. yeah. And it was like, rather than, you know, kicking me off the discord or anything, I mean, there were several people that, you know, that messaged me that were like, Hey, you know, we're here. Is there somebody we can call? Okay. Um, you know, do you have any, do you have any meds left? Is there anybody that you can talk to? And, um, you know, I uh, basically, you know, it, it just helped me from just kind of being alone. Yeah. Because um, being alone at that point would have been like the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, so that, you know, I mean, just being a part of Girl Streamers really helped. Um, that's awesome. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I I remember and I know uh, several people. I remember several people reaching out to you, um, yeah. in the management group, which is why I you know I was like, all right, they got it handled. They're good. Yeah. Um Because you sometimes you can bombard somebody too much. <laughs> like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you yeah, okay? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can be a little hard to handle. <laughs> it's like. There's too many people talking to me at once. Stop it. Yeah. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure there'll be, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some, one of my viewers going, yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've been there. I mean, hell, I can't tell you how many times Kink Nightmare calls me out on my crap and is like, hey, girl, you need to chill out. Yeah. You need to go take your medicine. You need to calm down because you're getting a little too testy over there. You need yeah. to chill out. Oh, yeah. Because everybody, everybody... Everybody has those moments. Right. <laughs> Trust yeah, me. And, you know, I mean, you know, King You kills, are not uh, alone in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> King, you know, King, I mean, Kink was one of the people that, you know, actually reached out to me. And it's like, are you okay? Are you going to be okay? Do <laughs> well, I need to call somebody? Cause it's Where's not, your roommate? Yeah. Because you know? <laughs> we, you know, we know it's not your norm. So. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so what keeps you so passionate about gaming and just the gaming community as a whole um getting to meet cool people and quite frankly um gaming is my element i mean these are my people you know <laughs> i mean we're talking we're talking about my people here and um you know games are just one of those things um that have that have helped me a lot over the years you know, from, I mean, like I told you about Mass Effect and my marriage, but it's also helped me, um, you know, helped me socialize. And in a lot of ways, it's my social outlet because there are days when I'm in so much pain that I can't, I can't even get to the door, much less go outside. Yeah. So, you know, being able to hop on, you know, being able to hop on Warframe or go into my stream and, you know, hey, you know, I've got folks there say, hey, Acid Queen, what's up? You know, and that, um, it really does help. I swear I'm not, yeah. like, weirdly touching myself. My dog is right here. Oh, no, I saw the wagging tail. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not ignoring you. My dog mm -hmm. just is right here. <laughs> no, there's a, I mean, there's the dog crate, and I saw the tail wag, so it's like, <laughs> Um, yeah, they're too big to be lap dogs, but they try to be lap dogs. Oh, of course, yeah. They're way too big. <laughs> yeah, Terrence, Terrence keeps trying to be a lap fungus, and he's too big for that. So <laughs> that's why I have the chair next to me, and he just gets up in the chair. And we'll, we'll be like, okay, Mom, poke, poke. Oh, you I need should to give totally me do that. I bet my dogs would totally sit in a chair next to me, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so I've got, uh, all right, we're going to get, um, even deeper. What okay. if you could, I know, 
Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the hell that was. If you could give your past self one to two words of advice from the wisdom and experience you have gained up until now, what would they be? Illegitimate non-carborundum. I don't know what that means. Don't. It's bastardized Latin for don't let the bastards wear you down. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, because... Um, I mean, basically, it kind of rolls off the tongue nicely, too. It does. It does. I mean, that's basically been my um, that's basically been my whole um, most of my most of my life, you know, is um, people around, you know, people close to me trying to beat me down. And there have been times when I've let them. And so um, I think just telling myself to you know, not let them, you know, basically not let them defeat me. <laughs> um, yeah. That would probably be the best advice I could give myself. So what trait of yours are you most proud of? My gift for languages. I'm a linguistic mutant. <laughs> I speak. Yeah, I am. That's I'm, right. You speak several yes. languages. I'm, I'm fluent in English and German. I am uh, conversational in French. I actually read it better than I speak it. Um, I'm mildly conversational in Spanish. Um, and I can, well, I taught myself how to count in, um, well, uh, aside from all the languages that I already speak, um, Italian, Finnish, uh, Swedish, and it, uh, three. no wait, Russian, not Swedish, Russian. Um, and I had taught myself how to count in Norwegian, but I forgot. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, that's dope. Have you, you don't do the Babel fish thing for German, do you? Uh, no, I do not. Um, I don't, I mean, I probably could, but I don't know that. Um, I don't feel that confident enough. Gotcha. Yet, you know, so, I mean, and there are other girl streamers that, you know, are actually native speakers. So I would rather, you know, I would yeah. rather be the bit, the babblefish than me, you um, know, because for me, it's like my second or third or fourth or fifth language, you know, but, um, for somebody else, it's their first language. Yeah. You know, so they would have an easier time of it. That's cool. Um, yep. so what is your greatest insecurity then? Um, I ain't got none. Uh, no, actually I have several. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have quite a few. I want no, somebody um, someday to say, I don't have any insecurities. Yeah. And that person will be lying through their teeth. I know. <laughs> 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 but no, um, I think, um, being social, being in a crowd of people that I don't know is really my biggest, um, is really the bogger that scares me the most. <laughs> you know, if I had a bogger, that would be it, would be a crowd of, you know, would be uh, being at a party in a crowd of strangers because, you know, with no one to talk to, because then it's like, what do I do? Yeah. You know? <laughs> um that's yeah i can i mean mm -hmm. i'm a social butterfly so it takes I, i'm i mean the older i get the yeah. the more shy i get because you know you get <laughs> you start to get comfortable when you get old okay oh, absolutely. and um <laughs> but you know it takes me a few seconds and then i'm like all right i'm good um i can tell that that guy's a gamer or i can tell that girl is not somebody to talk to yeah and what's really funny is i'm actually I'm actually really good at, um, I'm really good at observing people, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's like, I can kind of figure things out, um, pretty quickly, but, uh, I am just always afraid of opening my mouth because my interests are so weird and so diverse <laughs> that if I start talking, people will probably just be like, who the frell are you and who <laughs> let you in here? You know, <laughs> like, go away go away it's like because okay i don't know why that doesn't bother me but it doesn't yeah what bothers me i am more afraid of like people i know 
failing really? in front of people I know, then, oh, wow. uh, yeah, because it's like, I am failing in front of my, like, I, uh, singing on stage, my first time ever singing on stage, I was right. terrified to sing, you know, and I, I will, I always have that same feeling of the first mm-hmm. time of singing on stage because I'm singing in front of my peers. And yep. it's like, these are the most judgmental people because they're my peers, because they know yep. me. But then singing in front of strangers does not bother me one bit. It's still yeah, nerve- it's like, nerve wracking. Never see these people again, so I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> so like it doesn't. So being in a strange place doesn't really bother me like it does other people. But again, I'm also an extroverted yeah. person. But I understand yeah. how it bothers. I I totally understand it. Like mm-hmm. I totally get it. Um. So because I'm so used. I it's like my whole life I've been so used to kind of being like the person who's out of place yeah (laughs) and um being on being on the spectrum doesn't help that either (laughs) um i mean i can pass for neurotypical fairly well just because i've had it literally beaten into me but um but i don't always do so well at it (laughs) yeah well um you see see i didn't even know you were on the scale until you just said today yeah, See, and, I mean, you know, it is a spectrum. I mean, right. there are some people that do a really good job of, you know, that can present as neurotypical, you know, even even though they are autistic, you know, like me. Um, and then you have people like my husband who um, he was like, if you opened up the DSM-5 to Asperger's syndrome, you know, to that section of the autistic spectrum disorders, there would be his picture, <laughs> you know, I mean... Um, I have a friend like that. He's a great yeah. guy, but he his first thing out of his mouth when he met me was, I have Asperger's, so I just want you to know that because I don't socially understand things sometimes. Yeah. And I thought he was joking, and he wasn't. He was yeah. dead there serious. Of, there are a lot of times when, you know, I would have, like, I had friends that absolutely hated him, and I would keep telling them, no, he's not malicious, He's just clueless. Right. And come to find out, I was right. He wasn't malicious. He was just clueless. I, you know, so there would be, you know, so basically he learned, um, like, he's very, em- you know, he was very empathetic towards, um, you know, he could he could tell when somebody was sad or, you know, or happy. Like, he could detect mm-hmm. extremes in moods. And he was very empathetic towards animals, you know. Um, but when it came to actual, you know, social interaction and picking up on social cues, he tended to get in kind of tunnel vision and just focus on, you know, being pro Mike. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, that's where I would come in and I would be like, Michael, you know, you, you need to kind of learn some subtlety. (laughs) That was one of the things I had to learn over the years was um how to be subtle and how to um like a lot of times there are a lot of times when i i will talk to somebody and i will use movie references and book references and other kinds of obscure pop culture references because that was how i had to communicate a lot of the time with people um that weren't in my family yeah um because my i mean look i'm gonna be real honest my family toxic as frell Okay. (laughs) Um, I, you know, there's a reason why I don't want to talk to my sister. (laughs) Um, And it's just, it's one of those things where I, you know, I basically learned how to talk in code. (laughs) Yeah. And so if, um, like my favorite TNG episode was Darmok because I was the Temerian. (laughs) Yeah. And that was me growing up. And, you know, it, and it, it was always frustrating because I would make these references and nobody would get them because I was the only one that had seen that movie or I was the only one that had read that book or I was the only one that had seen that particular TV show and noticed that one scene. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny you say that because my husband, who I know is not, uh, well, as far as I know, is not autistic. Like, he's never shown those those signs but right. he's it's just, he's a dude he's clueless like i yeah. constantly i i think it's just not it's just a dude thing 
to be clueless sometimes. Yeah. Some people are just naturally clueless, you know. I mean, if, <laughs> I mean, if he's if he's truly curious, um, you could always, you know, he could always go for you know go oh, for an evaluation. But he's, he's not. Otherwise, he's just a really he's a really shy person. But he's, yeah, he's really, it. really, really, really highly intelligent. Um, oh yeah. So um, I think it's just his intelligence because he gets really cocky, and I'm like, dude. Yeah. I know this more than you do. He's like, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, <laughs> you're highly oh, yeah. intelligent in this section, honey. Come on. Yeah. But over here, you're what the Germans call a fach idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically someone who is generally very smart, but on certain things, they're a complete dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. So, <laughs> um, uh, so have you ever been trolled? Oh God! When Speaking haven't I been hubby. trolled? <laughs> the the last time, the most recent time I got trolled was sat was yesterday when I was doing my variety stream, and I'm playing Mass Effect Andromeda, and this jackass comes into my channel, and he's like, "This is a shitty game." Just being honest, and I said, you know, so all I did was, you know, I I basically dropped my Krogan emote on him, and I said, "Yeah," and you're, I said, "And you're a shitty excuse for a troll." Bye bye, and. <laughs> oh my god i got trolled yeah, yesterday I mean, too i had one troll in an eight the, hour stream one troll I'm... i get i get the dumbest trolls it's like come on if you people are gonna troll me at least be inventive you know but it's always the same cracks about you know like when i have my face cam it was cracks about my weight it was you know or cracks about my hair or um you know, people, you know, telling me that I was a dude, you know, and I don't uh, understand. Like, yeah, you're not like, clever. Like, you have yeah. no. Po I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm breaking my rule. Life, you I'm, know, I'm breaking my rule. But Arcane Snowman in chat says, put in some effort. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> My man, so Arcane Snowman true. is one of my viewers. <laughs> but seriously, put some effort into it, for God's sake. He still sakes. needs to tell me what weapon he needs in exchange for that rock to dark dagger, though. <laughs> <laughs> he still hasn't told me. Oh, but gosh. anyway. <laughs> yes, but yeah. no, I feel Arcane, you. Arcane is one of my viewers. <laughs> He's one of my regulars. <laughs> I, 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 it is, it is. It's always the same shit. It's like, you don't know that I... One time I was doing a cosplay one. And he was like, you're too fat to cosplay. And I looked dead at, the, I did dead pan at the camera. I said, I'm fat. I was, I watched that stream. You I were there for that, that one. Yes, That's right. I was. And I started, yes. I started snarking at him. That was the best part. He's just kind of, dar, dar. He had and nothing he got, to say. And then he got banned. And I was like. Oh, oh well, man. there goes my fun. <laughs> I remember. That's right. I forgot you were there. I'm yep. just like. There's like three or four people there too, and every everybody was like, "What the hell?" Yep. It's like, it's like I'm fat. Oh, I never would have guessed if you hadn't told me. Oh my god, why didn't <laughs> anybody tell me this? <laughs> I I also love when like they misspell everything. Oh jeez. Or it's their like... grammar is so bad. Like yesterday, they came in and said, "You're fat." Y o u r, and I'm like, "Dude, it's Y o u apostrophe r e." Ugh! You're getting banned because your grammar is bad. <laughs> exactly. Your grammar is bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> I just find those... I can't... I can't... I'm not hurt by the people who suck oh, at spelling. My personal favorite is when is when I get some random dude coming in and asking me if I'm a real grill. G-R-I-L-L. -L. And I'm just like, yeah, I am... As a matter of fact, I am a real grill. If you, if I had a face cam, you'd see Weber tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just go right back to playing. You know? <laughs> and they usually don't say anything. They usually leave after that. <laughs> oh, my God. But the oh best part is when, is when I have... Um, is when I have viewers... Um, you know, so was what I have people in my chat that start piling on the trolls. <laughs> and I'm just like, yes, it <laughs> is. People, it's great, my peeps, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I get. Oh God, 
but it's like I think the the only troll that I ever had that was really that was actually semi imaginative was um when I had I had my hair was shorter than this and I had it in kind of a um a side sweep okay and some guy came into the stream one night and told me that I looked like Ursula I would have you know? taken that as a compliment she's well, pretty it, bad the thing is he didn't he didn't deliver it as a compliment he's like you know ugly ass Ursula looking blah 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 and I'm just like <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll give you I'll give you ten out of ten for the Ursula comment. Minus several million for everything else. Ban. <laughs> oh my god. Ugly ass and, Ursula. <laughs> yeah, you know, something or other. The only thing I remembered about it was that he compared me to Ursula from, you know, the little mermaid, and I'm like <clears throat> I would okay. have been like, What? Ursula's dope. She got her own place. She got people working for her. No kidding. You know? Are you serious? And she's purple? Come on! Yeah, really, you know. <laughs> oh my god. Of so... course, if I was super skinny, somebody would probably have called me Isma, but then I would have just been, pull the lever, crunk! Ban! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what, um, right, skinny people get it too. It's not just fat people. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've I've been in friend streams and they're like you're too skinny you need a fat you oh, need yeah. to thicken no, there up was, um, and it's like are you are you serious there was an there was a the a um a League of Legends uh streamer that was on the Mountain Dew channel Friday uh Karma was her name and she is actually one of the best league players in the entire world very pretty young lady. Um, but oh, I think I've said, heard of her. Yeah. Yeah, and somebody came in the you know came in and said that she looked like a um what was it she looked like concentration camp survivor. Oh my god. And it was like that person was immediately banned. <laughs> that's that's just straight up offensive. That like, is on ridiculous. all levels because yeah. it's a freaking that's not cool, man. Yeah. Especially you know. with the um I mean you know where like it's the whole holo like the um the anniversary of the holocaust was recently or it's coming yeah. up like we're right around oh, yeah. that time that's not okay dude yeah it's like so, come on really you know geez. so but yeah he got you know he he got that out and was immediately banned and i'm like <laughs> yes oh my Two god mods on the case <laughs> so what advice would you have for new people getting into streaming um go balls out you know go hard or go home really uh. Uh, yeah <laughs> it's like um you know or to to quote my man the iron boyfriend i mean the iron bull silver or go home <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean don't you know don't be afraid to do it just you know pick something that you really like to play that you really want to you know that you really think would be cool to share with people and just go for it you know um don't worry about it being perfect I mean, hell, my stream is still far from where I would love it to be. Hell, my but, stream is far from where yeah, I want it to a, be. Yeah, but it's a it's a work in progress. So, you know, don't worry about it. You know, you're always you're. It's never going to be per perfect. You're always yeah. Even partnered, um, even partnered streamers are still doing stuff to keep it going, and because it's ever yeah. changing, it's ever evolving. Oh, exactly. You know, I mean, don't. Don't get disappointed just because you don't have, like, a stream deck, you know, and cool, you know, cool overlays and cool alerts and whatever, okay? Just have fun. God, you know? I didn't do alerts until I had gotten, like, 100 followers, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, it I, took I me forever to... I need to... I need to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> um... And even then, I was doing basic alerts. It took forever for me to actually update mm -hmm. my alerts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad about that. <laughs> um, so if there was one person, past or present, that you could have dinner with tonight, who would it be and why? Oh, God. It can be a celebrity. It can be a non-celebrity. Richard Feynman. Oh, why? Mm -hmm. Um... I, you know, I've always been, I've always been kind of a, a science nerd. Um, I mean, I failed the hell out of chemistry class in high school, but that was because I overthought it and, you know, confused myself. But 
Richard Feynman um, has always been one of my favorite physicists. Um, and like, if I ever get, if I ever get a Harley, you know, I would name it, I would name it for him, you know, cause all the vehicles in our family was, um, all the vehicles in our family, uh, were named for physicists that, you know, for nuclear physicists. Um, so we had, you know, we had uh, Heisenberg, um, the uncertain, uh, escort, there was Sakharov, the indestructible dart. <laughs> there, there was, uh, um, what was it? Uh, Fujita, the FTL Toyota, but that's a, that's a, a fictional nuclear physicist. Um, and we had Fermi, the, um, Fermi, the nuclear cavalier. Um, Oppenheimer was my husband's Honda. <laughs> and then I had, and then I had a Nissan cube that I had named for Leo Zillard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so people were like, you, you really like thermonuclear devices, don't you? And I was like, what? It's <laughs> like, no, no, they're just nuclear physicists. That's all. I like physics. Okay. But, but no, Richard Feynman was always very entertaining. And, um, the, my favorite moment, um, involving him was after the Challenger disaster, and they had, you know, and they had that commission presenting the reports and everything. And the people from Morton Thiokol were talking about how the, the rubber O-rings on the shuttle boosters would, you know, it's like, oh, no, they're, you know, they're designed to stand up to sub-zero temperatures, blah, 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 indestructible, yada, yada. And while this guy is droning on and on and on and on and on and on and on, Dr. Feynman just took a, you know, took a sample O-ring and dunked it in his little thing of ice water and pulled it apart and he's like do you see what i'm doing here <laughs> do you see what i'm doing to this o-ring and that was just after me dunking it in 32 degree water so you want to try that again <laughs> and i saw that and i went i like him <laughs> <laughs> nice i like that man he's awesome <laughs> oh that's awesome yes um so what um i skipped i missed this question um uh, what is, did, did I ask what is your greatest challenge or obstacle that you've had to overcome in your life? Um, no, you did not. I would um, like to know. <sighs> I, somehow um, I missed it. I don't know why. Well, it's, um, I mean, I've kind of, I, I think it's been a little bit of a thread in a lot of my answers, but, um, basically my family. <sighs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I had, um, I did not have a very healthy uh, home life. Um, and quite frankly, calling my family toxic would be a, a compliment. <laughs> um, it That's was, rough. It, it, was, it was really rough. And, um, you know, there was, there was a lot of anger that I had to, you know, that I had to deal with, um, yeah. you know, that I have had to deal with over the years. And there's, um, you know, I still have, um, you know, I, I have PTSD because of it. Um, I mean, there have been, you know, there've been times when my, my roommate has, you know, gotten pissed off during a PUBG match and, you know, he starts yelling at his monitor and I just have to tell myself, you know, Hey, he's playing PUBG. It's cool. You're Trust me, he's that. not yeah. yelling at you. I promise. Yeah. He's yelling at the mother effers in PUBG. Exactly. Because you know, I he's... yell at those mfers too. Oh yeah, you know, and so, <laughs> um, but hearing a door slam, uh, will freak me out. Um, oh jeez. Oh yeah. I mean, um, when I was um when I was living with my sister, it was pretty bad. Um, because when she gets really upset, she starts screaming and hollering and, um, yelling all kinds of horrible, ugly things. And when we were growing up, she was actually physically abusive too. Um, I mean, so was I, but, um, not to the degree that my sister was. I mean, she used to kick my ass on a regular basis. And so I was always afraid that the hitting would start and I just learned to, kind of hide yeah when all the noise started so that's i couldn't sick. imagine that because i actually have a really good relationship with my brother 
Not yeah. to rub, I'm not you trying can... to rub it in your face or anything. Oh, no, but, no. Like, I don't, I, I don't. I have, have a good relationship with their families, you know, and I think it's a great thing. I, I don't we... understand how, like, I get, like, I don't have a good relationship with my mom. My mom right. is, like, she can, she's a total bitch. Um, I love her, but she's a complete bitch. Yeah. Um, but no, the big, but the big, the big light in my life, in my family, it's my in-laws, my in-laws and I get along fabulously and have. Because you didn't grow up with them. <laughs> well, since, I mean, since the day we met. Okay. I tell stories about my father-in-law all the time. And Aww. like, and it was so funny. There was one, um, when I was at PAX East 2014, uh, Keith Farley, who is a voice actor, he does a lot of video games and. I know that name. For those who. Yeah, he was uh, Kellogg in Fallout 4. He was also Thane Krios in Mass Effect 2 and 3. And um, I, I told him that, um, that he reminded me of my father-in-law, Oscar. And he kind of looked at me like, what the hell? You know? And I said, that's actually a compliment. And I said, because I love my father-in-law. Oscar and I got <laughs> along. Oh, no, Oscar and I got along great. He was very funny. Okay. Very, you know, very witty. Okay, and he was not a bad-looking dude, okay? <laughs> well, I mean, you married so, his son. I, I, yeah, well, you know, um, <laughs> if, you asked, if you asked Oscar and Susan, they would say, I put up with their son. But, <laughs> but no, it was, um, I mean, it was one of those things. It was like when, um, when I got married, um, the, uh, the day that Mike and I got married, um, and there is a story behind it, but I won't tell it here, um, we, um, like his family all came down from Park Rapids, Minnesota, and um, Mike and I lived in Fargo at the time. Um, so they all came down to Fargo from Park Rapids, and they were all there. And when it got to the, um, uh, when it got to the Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace part, Oscar belted out, admit it, Susan, I'll forgive you! Because the running... <laughs> The running joke in the family was that Mike was really the milkman's kid, you know. And Mike just looks at Oscar and grins and points to the Klein schnoz. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody in the room just busted up. But that was, I mean, that's my, you know, those are my in-laws. That's and, great. You know, and I've, I've got friends that are basically my family by choice, you know. And, and then there's my nephew who, you know, um out in Denver, who I absolutely adore. And he was actually the reason why I went to Denver in the first place. You've talked about him before oh, a lot. Oh, I, I, love, I love that kid. I mean, he's on the spectrum, just like, you know, just like Auntie. And, you know, he's also a oh, big so you gamer. guys got that connection. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it, um, when, I, um, when I was living on my own out there, um, like, he would come and visit on the weekends. Aww. And, you know, and we'd game and watch, you know, watch YouTube videos, uh, you know, watch cartoons, and just generally, you know, um, have a good time. And I, you know, I really miss him. You know, Aww. and they're, you know, so I, I do try to call every now and then, and then... He'll um, just have to my... come visit you down in California. Exactly, exactly. I would love it if he was able to come and visit me in San Diego, you know. So, maybe it'll happen. I don't know. But... Um, well, that's... Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I, you know, I hear I hear a lot more of that than you would think um, oh, yeah. of people who have toxic relationships with their families, mm -hmm. and it boggles my mind how people can treat each other. And I'm not saying you like a, right. a, my one of my best friends. Her parents doped up and let the kids raise themselves. And it's yeah. like, I don't, I, that boggles my mind. Like, how can you behave that way? Like, how yeah. can, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I've always been very upfront about, um, you know, about, uh, my growing up years and, and about traumas that have happened to me, um, that I won't get into on this podcast, but yeah, we ain't got time. One, That'll yeah, be another one podcast. <laughs> yeah. Because one, it's my way of dealing with them. And two, um, it's just, it's kind of my way of letting other people that may be in the same situation or may have been in that same situation. Hey, you're not alone. Yeah. Okay. And you know, just, you know, my talk, if my talking about it helps somebody else, then so much the better. That's how I look at it too. Yeah. You know, so, and, um, quite frankly, one, you know, one thing that, um, that I learned from all of it was, 
to just try to be a better person each day than I than I've been the day before. Um, and I have actually, I mean, I used to be a douche. Okay, I was, I will admit, I was a big ass douchebag for a no long time. No way. No. Yeah. Um, but I've, you know, I've kind of learned to um, just be more chill and be more. Hey, you know what? That that's not cool. And, you know, like if somebody does something, you know, that's not okay. It's like, hey, you know, that's really not okay because you know, of this and this and this. And right. try putting yourself in the other person's shoes, dude. Yeah. And, you you know, there are people that listen and then there are people that, you know, that get upset and, you know, and flounce. Um, you know, I lost one of my moderators yesterday because uh, that person made a, you know, made a, a trans antagonist joke in the stream. And I talked to him about it on Discord and I said, look, you know, that was not okay because, you know, and this is why. And he got yeah. mad and flounced. So I'm like, oh, well. You know, you know what? You can't control everybody. Yeah. You know, it's like if he's going to, you know, if that person's going to be like that, well, nothing of value was lost then. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Do you have any cool tattoos or piercings? No, I do not. I wish oh. I did, though. Because if I did, I would have the sightless eye of Carolina right over my heart. Because my Hurricanes, best damn hockey team in the NHL, <laughs> says anything different? Yeah. <laughs> I, I am not a hockey person. Yeah, I see the Steelers jersey. <laughs> As I, I sit the, here wearing I my Steelers the, jersey. I see the Steelers jersey. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> I love Steelers! Oh, oh. God. <laughs> so, oh, God. All well, right. you know, my roommate's a Cowboys fan, so we oh, all have our God. crosses. Oh, God, why? Oh, well, my we all God. have our crosses to bear. <laughs> hey, I, I have... Look, I okay. I I actually am kind of going to address the chat here. I do have mad respect for the Oilers. I do have to say that because in 2006, during the Stanley um, during the Stanley Cup playoffs, of all the fan bases that visited Raleigh, the the best one was the the Oilers fans. All the Edmonton fans that came in. I mean, they were just cool people. And, you know, even, you know, it's like at the end of game seven, if you watch a video of the Hurricanes bench and they're all celebrating, I mean, it's like the second that horn goes, there's a guy in an Edmonton jersey, he just turns to the, you know, to the Hurricanes fan next to him and puts out his hand and he's like, congratulations, you know, and I, you know, if there was a, if there were a bunch of fans that I ever had to have back at the PNC arena again, it would be the Oilers fans because they are just <laughs> awesome they're great people, you know. Oh man! Um, and now Chad is talking about organized sports, and I love it. You know what? I'm a geek for games. I'm also a geek oh. for sports. So preach it, preach it. I'm yeah. all about everything. So yeah. what is? I've got three more questions. After, okay. I've got three more questions. We are running out of time. So after my three questions, um, I'm gonna do the closing and. Um, then we will leave it open to do Q&A for the chat and for anybody who is actually listening to the podcast. If you guys want to hear the open Q&A from the chat, you'll have to go to YouTube for that part. Um, so what is an ideal weekend for you? Oh, God, an ideal weekend for me. Hockey. <laughs> A game. <laughs> And my cats. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it would be great if I had, you know, companionship that wasn't four-legged and said meow. But, hey, you know, the cats are cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like if I, you know. <laughs> but if, yeah, if a yeah. dude wants to come hang out. Yeah, you know, cool if a you know, handsome young man wants to come and, you know, get a little acid queen action, you know. Be a cougar. Wow. Oh. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you most thankful for? Um, my friends, AKA my family by choice. Um, you know, and I, I tell them all the time, 
you know, like my um, Joe and Adrith, my uh, my friends back in Annapolis, you know, I tell them all the time. It's like, look, I owe you guys my life because um, the 15 months in Edmonton, my, my nephew aside, it kind of um, undid like years of therapy. But my, um, um, you know, but Joe and Adrith basically gave me a safe place and they gave me a supportive environment. And they helped me get back to where I needed to be, you know. And yeah. so, you know, we were all having breakfast together the day I left Annapolis. And I said, no, I said, I really do owe you guys my life. And I will never stop being grateful for that. <laughs> so, um, you know, they're like, hey, you, you needed help. So. <laughs> That's course, awesome. I am kind of sad that I had to leave my little Castiel behind, but the cow cat adopted them after after their cow cat Riggs passed away and Cass and Riggs were good buddies <laughs> so basically Cass adopted auntie and uncle and I'm just like well I can only take two cats with me to, to California so <sighs> Terrence, Sun Tzu come on guys <laughs> <laughs> so what is your strongest passion outside of streaming um Science! <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I like me some science, too. No, actually, um, just, I mean, just general um, nerdiness. But, yeah, science, specifically space. Um, I am all about space and space technology. I love, yes, I love I astronomy. Mean, if... Like if they if they held a contest for you know who is the biggest civilian proponent of the space program, I would probably be top ten. Um, yes, <laughs> she blinded me with science. <laughs> she but, blinded I mean, me with I... science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh God! But no, I mean, I you know I am a huge proponent of the space program, and it's like whenever I see people dropping you know basically dissing um space exploration and you know the not even uh you know not even half penny that nasa gets out of you know each dollar of the federal budget yeah i just you know it's like i basically just drop the drop the facts hammer on them and see like oh really <laughs> get rid of your cell phone get off the internet um yeah a lot's come car, from it you know this yeah oh and if you have a microwave get rid of that bad boy because uh the microwave was directly from the space program and also i also get rid of your ballpoint pen <laughs> i actually have some dude tell me that it was from star trek the microwave and i'm like no are you the serious the microwave was invented in 1946 by a nasa engineer who tried to figure out why the chocolate bar in his pocket kept melting every time he walked past a microwave antenna. You know, and that's when the Amana radar range was invented. So there you go. <laughs> Star Trek didn't come out until 1966. <laughs> that's 20 years. How do you explain it? <laughs> It's like so, time. How does it work? How? Um. Okay. So, all right. I gotta. I gotta wrap it up and do the closing stuff. However, quick question yes. or uh, sure. quick, not quick question. Oh, oh, quick yeah. tidbit yes, that you would find cool. My brother works. My brother's in the Air Force, but technically, what his job is in the Air Force is under uh, NASA. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's in the Space Command. He is actually at Stargate. Yes. He is stationed at Stargate. Well, yeah, because he's, he's, he's out in the springs. So, so yeah. Um, yep. yeah, technically, he told me the other day, technically what he does is under NASA's program. Yep. Yep, so, he's part of the Space Command. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really cool. It's like, oh, that's pretty dope. Although I can't talk about what he does because I'm not allowed to know. That's the kind of yeah. security clearance he has. Well, hey, you know, it's <laughs> under the national security act it's covered under the national security act so, um yeah. so where and when can we find you streaming i uh i tend to stream um my schedule has shifted um it's shifted quite a bit um i was doing overnights for a while because i do have quite a few viewers in um in europe and asia but um i i've I've started splitting it up um, and doing morning and evening. So um, 
mornings. Uh, it's uh, weekday mornings from about 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific to um, 6 p.m. Pacific. And okay. then, um, you know, if I am able to do an overnight, then it starts at midnight and we'll go to 4 a.m. <laughs> okay. But yeah, but that's every, that's, um, the overnights are generally going to be every other day. So, you know, like Tuesday and Thursday. All right, those, cool. Yeah, those would be the overnights. Yes, Terrence. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to close this out really quick so mm -hmm. that um, we can, you know, wrap up the audio stuff. But stick around and we will do our Q&A. That will be YouTube only content. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's fine. real content. Care. Oh, yeah. Then I can Wait. tell the story of how I got married. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been a girl streamer podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Girl Streamers is partnered with Loot Crate, Fresh Designs, Punks, Paracord, Simple Jerky, You and Racing Chairs, Glam Tom, and Sennheiser. Links to all these amazing partners are down below, so please feel free to click. Thanks, guys, for all your support. Please follow us at Girl Streamers on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram. If you have any questions or would like more information, you can visit our website at girlstreamers.com and contact us through there. You can donate to Girl Streamers via Game Wisp. Oh, actually, I need to change that. Um, you can actually subscribe to us now because we are affiliated and you can buy some super cool gear in our online shop at designedbyhumans.com forward slash shop forward slash girl streamers. You can find Acid Queen on Twitter at HCL Queen Games. That's H-C-L-Q-U-E-E-N-G-A-M-E-S and on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Acid Queen 5426. That's A C I D. Q U E E N 5426. Our next podcast will be next Sunday, October 8th, with Paragon Trouble right here, same time. This podcast is a part of the Two Lazy Dogs Media Group and the Girl Streamers community. Encourage, support, grow. Okay, and oh we're out. All right. <laughs> oh, yes, Terrence. Yes, I'm oh. scratching the chin. Yes. All right, now you guys can um, actually ask us happy. questions. <gasps> questions! Throw all your questions at me. Oh, ask and me to, all the questions. And to answer Music Chick, <laughs> so Stargate was filmed in where it's supposed to be stationed is Cheyenne Mountain, which is a real actual mountain that exists, and they do actually have a base there. Um, and that's where my brother works. Uh, and funny story, quick story while we're waiting on people to ask questions. Um, my brother, his first week of being at, um, uh, being stationed there and stuff, he's walking around the mountain and he's like, I, you, there's, there's aliens like on the walls everywhere. Like there's all kinds of stuff. And he comes up to this, this door and it says Stargate command. Oh God. And he's like, That's I can't stupid. not open this. He opens a door and it's a broom cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Music Chick asks, what's your favorite color and why? My favorite color is red. It's, um, I've always, I've always liked red. Um, partly, um, well, no. Yeah, it's just, you know, red for whatever reason. I, you know, it's just cool, you know. Um, I have a lot of favorite colors, but, it, you know, red is like the king of the, uh, the king, the uh, top of the pops. Mm. The top of the pops. The top of the pops, yep. Top of the pops, that's great. Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, how many, uh, I'm trying to... Scroll up and see if anybody's asked any questions. 
Stargate Base is also the base in War Games. Is it really? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, it's. Oh, um, it, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, in, um, at one time its uh, code name was Crystal Palace. I don't know if they've changed it. It or was not. also NORAD at one point. Yeah, um, when it was NORAD, it was Crystal Palace, but. Uh, no, you haven't been here to ask your question, Trouble. I had to stop asking it because you're never here. So, if you could choose any game universe, book universe, or movie universe to live in, Ooh. what would be that universe? What would you do, and where would you live? Oh, my God. Right? That's um, a good one. I love it. Oh. Um, it would be the Mass Effect universe. I knew it. I knew that's what you were going to say. Of course, yeah, but <laughs> not, not so I could bone a Turian. <laughs> I think I that's exactly bone. why. Yeah. See, I, I knew, I knew Paragon was going to make that face. <laughs> I, see, I wanted to head off all the Garrus Mansers before they go, yeah, you just want to bone a Turian. No, I'm not going to sleep with a Turian or an Asari. God, no. Uh, no, actually, I would just, I would want to explore. Um, I would want to be part of the uh, part of the Systems Alliance Expedition Corps and uh, just explore the galaxy and see what there is to see. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, uh, see, I'm sorry, Paragon. If I can't have Garrus, then forget it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I would say, you know, I would go for Caden, but Shepard would be upset with me. So yeah. Look at the <laughs> cute Katie. He's so fat. <laughs> Oh, he's like a big like his belly is big and then he's got the little head. He's so cute. What my icon? No, your cat. Your oh, cat Terrence? is like oh, right yeah. there. He's so cute. He is. Yeah, he is. He is a very handsome kitty. Yes. Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh, it's so funny in the in the middle. It's like when I when I go to bed, he'll go run. He'll run down the hall and jump up on the bed <laughs> and wait for me, and then I'll get into bed and he'll just flop right next to me. <laughs> How long have you been in San Diego? When did you move out there? I got to San Diego on 4th of July weekend. Okay, that's right. I knew it was during the summer at some point. Yep. 4th uh, of July weekend. Um, oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> that had to have been crazy. Oh, yeah. It was, honestly, I kind of liked the drive. Um, the drive was pretty cool. I um, Especially once I hit, uh, once I hit 40, you know, and yeah. got to the old route 66 oh god yeah yeah and um funny story i was i had stopped to um i had stopped in albuquerque to get some gas and i actually ran into a couple of people that i went to high school with but i didn't say a damn thing to them i just i recognized them and i was like okay not gonna say you know looked at us it's, it's a like small my, world after yeah, my brain just kind of went no i did not make a, well actually yes i did have to make a left to get into the gas station so <laughs> make a left turn at albuquerque yeah. oh but no I, it was like i saw them and i just kind of went mm, yeah not gonna say anything because yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> i'll just start you know i'll they'll just be drama and no not gonna bother uh, Arcane Snowman asks, what's your favorite book, series, slash novel? Oh, God. Um, there are so many. Um, believe it or not, it's the... Um, hang on a sec. It's been... Oh, it's been friggin' forever since I've read it. Uh, cool. Okay, the um the Cold Fire trilogy by uh, C. S. Friedman. Okay, it's yeah, it's um it's kind of a combination sci-fi and fantasy uh, trilogy, and it's really fascinating. Um, it's it basically deals with this world where um humans migrated from Earth thousands and thousands of years before, and they encountered um, this energy called Fae, which basically serves the purpose of magic. 
and it's this really interesting intersection of, of magic and science and how um, it kind of proves Clark's third law. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's so... Uh, how can I best describe it? You just got to check it out. The first book in the trilogy, it's uh, Black Sun Rising. And then um, True Night Falls, or When True Night Falls is the second one. And then uh, Crown of Shadows is the third. Did you say Black Knight Rising? Black Sun Rising. Black and Sun the, Rising. Yeah, and the second one is When True Night Falls. And the third one is Crown of Shadows. I feel like I've heard of that book, Black Sun Rising. Yeah, they're, um, they, it's a... It's actually a pretty well written trilogy, but it's not. Um, it's <clears throat> kind of obs- you know. It like I said, it's a little obscure. Yeah. Um, not Sound a lot like of a pe- hipster. Yeah, not. You really probably wouldn't know it. Yeah, yeah, not really a hipster thing. It's like I wish more <laughs> people knew it because it's it's just really good, you know. And it's. Are you it really a hipster? Like, oh God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Dear gods, I hope not. But no, um, it deals with things of, like, you know, um, the struggle between good and evil and an exploration of, you know, what good and evil are and, um, um, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, redemption. It's, you know, um, it at, at its heart, it's kind of a redemption story on multiple levels. Yeah. Um, that's so that's cool. what I really like about it. Yeah. I'll have to check <laughs> it out. Yep. Um, trouble ask um <laughs> what would your pirate name be your pirate name and your ship what would it my be my pirate name oh god <sighs> um pirate name and ship name go jeez i can't oh man i can't think of it um <laughs> yeah i'm just like I don't know. Um, your ship should be like. Oh, a space pirate. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can be a space pirate too. <laughs> <laughs> your ship should be like Queen, something like the Queen, like the Queen's Gambit or something. Yeah, Queen's Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> Queen Anne's other revenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I um. You know, if I actually let my girl fuzz bl- um, grow out, it would probably be, um, probably be, uh, I'd be a Rule 63 Blackbeard. Alrighty. <laughs> Only not as ruthless. <laughs> I wouldn't quite be as ruthless as Edward Teach, and I wouldn't, you know, tie, like, you know, matches into my, you know, into my beard and set it alight, but... <laughs> But yeah, it would be a Rule 63 Blackbeard. Yeah, <laughs> um, and, sh- yeah and the ship name would be Queen Anne's Other Revenge. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yep. I like it. Um, so, sushi or no? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Music Chick did ask earlier um, what the story was behind my emote. Um, oh, I didn't I'll... realize that you had an emote. Okay, I thought she was talking to somebody else. Yes, yeah, explain. I just popped it up and... Okay, that is a hydrochloric acid molecule oh. wearing a crown and wielding a Tigris Prime. Tigris Prime is one of the best shotguns you can get in Warframe. <laughs> That's great! Yeah, and if you, if, you, um, if, you can get, if you get the larger version of it... Um, it's it actually has kind of a grumpy look on its face. <laughs> oh, that is cute. Oh my god, that is so cute. It is cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I I that's the first time I've seen it. That's awesome. When am I going to GM a game? Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Oh god. Oh my god. I mean, we started out this podcast talking about uh tabletop games so that's true when when am i gonna gm a game oh my god i don't even have rule books anymore we should totally do a community stream where you're the gm we've been looking for a gm okay so 
I'll have to actually. We can come use up with something. roll twenty. <laughs> look, roll twenty has all the compendiums or compendiums That's true. That's of five uh, E, and uh, we've been playing through five E with the husband for the husband's fiftieth. I got all of his old D and D buddies together to do a campaign, and so they've continued with it. And so we've been playing five E, and it's actually. 5e does a great job at combining 3.5 mm-hmm. and 4 um, into uh, the good parts of each and combining it, okay. and it does a better job. Because, see, I started with 4e, and I liked it because it was easy for me to understand the game. Right. But as I got into it, it got boring as, as Frell. Yeah. It mm-hmm. got boring because you're spamming 1, basically, within 4e. But we went back to Pathfinder um, with another one of our campaigns, and I was like, all right, this kind of takes it a... It's a little long sometimes playing this game. Yeah. Uh, so 5e, I think, does a really good job at combining it and kind of keeps stuff going a little bit faster. And it also helps when you don't have a friend who tries to do everything that his character can't do. Oh god, metagaming drives me up the fracking wall. <laughs> <laughs> we had this friend who, he had like a bag of holding and half the bag of holding had freaking cinnamon buns in it and yep. he was, yeah, no. <laughs> oh. oh man. Have a good night, music chick. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Oh god! Oh, which uh, TTRPGs do you play? Oh Arcane god, Snowman. tabletop RPGs do I play? Um, let's see. Currently, I don't play any because I don't have a group. But um, I have played D and D, Second Ed, Third Ed, uh, and Three Point Five. I refuse to touch Four um, because I did not like how they redid the magic they system. They redid a lot of stuff. It's I so different. Really? Yeah. It. Five, I would want to take a look at, but I was kind of pissed off when um, basically anybody in the party can, you know, throw resurrection. And I'm like, why do you need a cleric? Because I'm kind of like the cleric's advocate. I got into, I kid you not, at Gen Con in 1997, I actually got into a shouting match with Gary Gygax over the role of a cleric in a party. Oh my god. Um, because you probably ran into my husband because he would run L five R tournaments at Gen Con back in the day. Oh, wow. you probably saw my <laughs> husband. But um, but no, I've played D and D, Pathfinder. I've played. Um, I also played Mech Warrior, um, the BattleTech RPG. Um, oh, I fact, know that one. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I was um, I was one of the playtesters for the third edition. Um. And that was actually how I got started writing for the FASA Corporation and then um, um, FanPro and then uh, Catalyst Game Labs. So, yes. Yeah, nice. So actually, I wrote for Battletech, you know. That's cool. Holy yeah. Cow. <laughs> That's but, dope. But no, I played that. I played uh, the Heavy Gear RPG, um, which is put out by Dream Pod 9. It is fun. It really is fun. I, I enjoy that a great deal. Um, God. What other RPGs have I played? That's really about it. You're such a nerd. I am a nerd. I am a nerd. <laughs> okay. Oh no, and I've also played um I've also played Mage and Vampire the Masquerade. Nice. Um yeah. have you uh you ever done GURPS? Oh yes, and GURPS too. I also have done GURPS. In fact I own a copy of GURPS Cyberpunk. And somewhere I have the shirt that uh, Steve Jackson Games was selling at the um um, at Gen Con in, in 97, which says um, SJG1, Secret Service, nothing. And they have the Zig runes for the, for the S's in Secret Service. <laughs> um, I've never played GURPS, but we've got some friends who play GURPS every Friday night. And they've been yeah. doing it for, oh my god, how long has Scott and Amy been doing GURPS? 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. 25 yeah. years every Friday night. I'm but like, yeah, I don't... Mm. <laughs> but let me tell you, yeah, I've, I've played a few. Um, I mean, I've read up on a lot more, um, yeah. like the L5R RPG, um, but I never actually, you know, I've never actually had a chance to play it. Blurg um, GURPS! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just sold, and I sold all our GURPS books, except for GURPS Cyberpunk. That one I have. <laughs> um... 
Yeah, I, uh, because they just revamped L5R, uh, and it's completely different from what it used to be. I've never played it. (laughs) Literally, the only knowledge I have is from what the husband has just told me about it. Right. Um, she didn't play it, but she used to go to, um, Gen Con and stuff all the time. He's getting all excited. He's like, oh, oh. did somebody play L5R too? Because he freaks no, out whenever he... Yeah. Yes. I haven't played L5R, but I have, I have read the source books. So, <laughs> you know. I also played the card game a few times, but... Um, yeah, he was... Yeah, the husband was open beta for L5R 5E is coming this week. <laughs> Shit. Husband. Woo. There you go. Open beta for L5R 5E is coming this week. <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god, that's so funny. I'm a, I, is that the... That might be the role That might, yeah. See, he's only ever done the card game. Right. Game. Oh, you have done the role playing game? Okay, yeah. Um, now we're having a conversation about tabletop games and not even doing a podcast anymore. Oh my yep. god, this is like... This is what happens when we... Um, don't wrap everything up and we continue doing stuff like we just start talking about everything of course of course i have no problem with this yeah (laughs) this is youtube content (laughs) um but yeah when he did l5r he was like the dude who you saw his name that you had to play up you had to you had to play him and you <laughs> would shit your pants because you're like, oh, oh shit. Because he was that's worldwide the best L5R card player back then. That's, that's too funny. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah, so- I've, um, God, I think the last, the last CCG that I played was uh, Hearthstone. <laughs> and badly. <laughs> like, I'm how terrible. I play Hearthstone badly. <laughs> I'm so bad at Hearthstone. Like, it's not even funny. I'm so. Hearthstone. I just. <laughs> Hearthstone. Well, I mean, you know, it's Hearthstone. Yes, it is Hearthstone. It hurts my yeah. heart that I can't get oh. it because I like and, the WoW card yeah. game, but I cannot get. I don't understand. I don't know. It's a simplified version of the card game of the WoW card game. I don't understand yeah. why I can't get it. Yep. I'm just like I don't know. Yep. Ugh, it just doesn't click for some reason. True facts. Uh, but. Anyway, uh, I think this is a good place to wrap this up. Um, this has been really fun geeking out with you. Oh, that, let me tell you. This has been oh, so Oh, God. Fun. Oh, yes. My roommate wanted me to tell this story. Oh, okay. I was at, I was at Northeast Wars. Um, this was uh, back in 95. And Mike Stackpole, who, among Battletech authors, he is God. Okay, he is the the word of God flows from his pen. Okay, well I'm at um, I'm at this con and Mike Stackpole was a guest at the con and we were playing in this BattleTech game that was run by Brian Neistel, who at the time was the line developer for the FASA Corporation. And um, um, I forget what somebody what somebody said to Mike, but he looked you know he just said well. Um, you know, it's not every day you meet a legend, <laughs> referring to me, because um, I was kind of, um, how to put this, a holy terror in the news group, uh, in the Usenet news group, rec.games.mecca, <laughs> um, you know, and um, yeah, I had a reputation for being a little fanatical, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, mm, okay, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So, um, so that's that. But yeah, my, you know, being called a legend by, uh, by Mike Stackpole, it's like, yes, yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, that's I'm awesome. not a legend. I'm just a semi-legend. But no, actually, <laughs> now I've become a myth because, you know, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned Camille Klein to Battletech players and they're like, she's still alive? <laughs> she hasn't exploded in a ball of flames yet? <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> like, nope. We haven't exploded in a ball of flames and salt yet. <laughs> <laughs> now you just chilled out significantly. Exactly. I've just chilled <laughs> significantly, so I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> oh yes, hello, Terrence. Hello. Hi. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna yes. shut down the podcast here then. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks guys. We will see you all later.
Good night, everybody.